one. Hold on like one to... second. Mr. Phelps, I'm sorry. Can we just wait like a minute or two to let people join us? Sure. Give me the thumbs up. I will do that. All right, Mr. Phelps, I think we're ready. We're ready, okay. Good evening, everyone. I would like to bring the October 21st, 2020 meeting of the Annenberg Board of School Directors to order. May we have a roll call, please, uh, Ms. Caldwell? Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Mrs. Krajewski? Here. Mr. Harris? Here. Mr. Goldsborough? You're muted, Mr. Goldsborough. Here. Ms. Joseph? Here. Ms. Fagan? Here. Mr. Evans? Here. Mr. Chavon? Here. Mr. Phelps? Here. Okay, uh, Mr. Evans, can we have the invocation in the pledge, please? Yes. Heavenly Father, please hear our prayer, bless all schools, colleges, and especially the Interborough School District. And grant to this board in their in their deliberations this evening the spirit of wisdom, truth, and knowledge. What is undertaken always be done in charity and in peace, and what we do might be for the benefit of others. All this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, all righty. Uh, we will move now to uh, number two, a uh, report from our student representatives, uh, Francesca Parker and Grace Hughes. Welcome, Grace Hughes. First time you're uh, on tonight. You're muted, Francesca. Grace is starting us off tonight. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So for kindergarten, um, our children are settling in and adjusting to the routines that come with the transition into kindergarten. It is wonderful to walk the halls each day and hear all of the learning that is going on and the smiles and laughter that fill each room. The entire kindergarten academy faculty and staff have welcomed each student and are working hard to ensure that they are growing socially, economically, and academically. For Glen Olden School, not only was the start of our new way of learning, but we also welcomed a new acting principal, Ms. Cabido. Ms. Cabido jumped right in with full force and has already dedicated a lot of her time getting to know and help her new staff. She's been a great addition to our family and we are all excited to work under her leadership. The staff worked very hard to promote a smooth virtual start for all students and every student received a banker box filled with classroom supplies and a device to start their year virtually. Teachers were eager to meet their students through Zoom and Schoology. Our home and school sold Bucks masks to help promote safety and school pride. The PVIS team worked extra hard to make sure students and staff were familiar with the modified expectations for the start of our new learning model. They even hosted a virtual Wheel of Names raffle for students who were following Buck Pride expectations during Zoom classes. This was a big hit and students looked forward to the morning announcements to see who would win. We hosted our first Spirit Day on Thursday, September 24th. Students and staff were encouraged to dress in their favorite sports team colors or jerseys. Students had a blast. Some even changed their outfits for every new Zoom they attended. A raffle was held the next day for all students and staff who participated, and a few lucky winners won some really cool Glen Olden swag. The last week of September was definitely one that will go down in history. We received the greatest news from Superintendent Riley Students were returning to in-person learning. Teachers were dancing in the halls, and we, could, we all could not wait to have the students back in front of us. The students were just as excited to return, and boy, did they show up with some fashionable masks. Students have been demonstrating buck pride every day, compare, coming prepared with their masks and charge devices. 
it sure is a different kind of year, but everyone's adjusting nicely and just and, and is just so thrilled to be back. On Thursday, October 15th, we held our second spirit day. Our halls will be flooded with the color pink for breast cancer awareness. All right, uh, Nora, thank you. Oh, go ahead. For Nora, we would like to welcome our new acting vice principal, Dr. Tracy Costa. Nora is very lucky to have her on our team. Ms. Oliveri, our eighth grade ELA teacher, is currently working with Mr. Mills and his administrative intern. She is matriculating at Temple, working on her administrative certificate with Dr. Michael Plattis. On September 28th, Nora would welcome kindergartners and our life skills students back. Things went smoothly and all were happy. On September 30th, we welcomed back our first and second graders. Again, everything went well and the students were happy to be back. October 5th, the remaining grades returned. Many families are taking advantage of the free breakfasts and lunches. A big thank you to Mr. William McDevitt and Mr. Joseph McDevitt for helping Mr. Mills plan a new tree on the corner of Gessner and Seneca Avenues, formerly patrolled by our beloved crossing guard, Mr. Bob. Norwood is very happy to be back and we continue to look forward to a great year. At Prospect Park, the past several weeks have been very busy here. We welcomed our first and second grade students back to in-person learning on September 30th and got them accustomed to their new classes and then welcomed grades three through eight back to school on October 5th. It has been wonderful to see our students back in school and adjusting to our new normal. We held our virtual annual open house with tremendous attendance as hundreds of parents and family members joined multiple Zoom meetings with their ch child's teacher to hear about the great things that are going on at Prospect Park School. For Tinnicum, welcome to the 2020 and 20. I think Grace is Frozen. having some technical difficulties. Yes. Francesca, do you have another report to read? The Continental Breakfast oh. provided for your home school. Besides the store-bought goodies, we had some homemade treats that made our first day with all of our in-person students even better. On Tuesday, October 6th, Smiles, the mobile dentist team, came to Tinicum School. Many students had their teeth examined and some had dental work done in school. Thanks to the dental team and our district for providing this great service. At the high school, September 29th, student council held elections for officers and the following students were elected. President, Brent Parker, Vice President, Ali Scalessa, Secretary, Connor Schaefer, Treasurer, Cushy Desai, and Junior Board Rep, Grace Hughes. Congratulations to all the new officers. October 13th to October 23rd, class competitions. Seniors, juniors, sophomores, and freshmen are in a class competition with donations of canned goods and are being asked to bring in as many, can, as many cans as they can. The canned goods will go to Loaves and Fishes in Prospect Park for families in the Interborough and Ridley School District. November 7th, SATs will also be held at Interborough High School. And this concludes our report. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Parker and Ms. Hughes. We appreciate that. Okay, moving on to uh, number three, recognition, Ms. Riley. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. I am going to turn this over to Mrs. Spina and Mr. Johnston to do this portion of the recognition. Go ahead, Ms. Spina. Okay, so I'm going to um, recognize uh, Nicole Werner, one of our biology teachers, and she's a very humble person, so I know that this is going to make her anxious to listen to, but I'm just going to shout out all the good things about her. So um, I'm honored tonight to have the opportunity to celebrate our high school biology teacher, Nicole Werner, for earning the Jennifer Fannerstill Travel Award for 2020. To give some background on this award, I'd like to note that this award is given to a teacher who, like Fanner still, has demonstrated a commitment to learning and innovation in the biology classroom. The awardee receives registration to the National Association of Biology Teachers Conference, hotel accommodations for the duration of the conference, travel reimbursement, and a one-year complimentary membership to the National Association of Biology Teachers. This year, because of COVID, the conference will be virtual but Nicole will receive registration to this year's conference and the full benefits of the travel award towards next year's conference. I'd also like to draw attention to the fact that only one Fannerstill award is granted each year. 
and that the pool for potential applicants is enormous. Nicole's application was chosen after being measured against biology instructors in four-year and two-year colleges, as well as private, public, and parochial schools nationwide. In the time I've worked at Interboro High School, I've witnessed Nicole's creative approaches to her learner-centered pedagogy, her passion for helping all our students, and her dedication to her profession. Jennifer Fannerstill was known for being a guide to her students. She rejected the idea of the sage on a stage who lectures from the front of the classroom and said that as teachers, we need to remember that we are facilitators. If we provide the questions and the means, what our students do with those questions is what drives the lesson. Nicole is just such a facilitator to her students and excels at creating a student-centric environment in her classroom. While she is certainly an expert in her subject area, Nicole ventures beyond this role and supports students by acting as a guide, as a sounding board for ideas, and as a fellow scientist. Nicole creates a classroom environment in which students feel empowered to form their own hypotheses, perform their own research, and parse their own data. Her biology labs are bustling with activity, with students working together to problem solve. Hers is a classroom that runs so smoothly that it is almost impossible to see the incredible hard work that she has put into creating the systems that allow students to focus strictly on biology. To more truly mimic the real world biology lab environment, Nicole has written grants that give our students access to cutting edge lab technology, including a grant for an incubator that has grown 100% of its cultures, rather than the 50% that had grown before, so that our students have many more samples on which to experiment. She has communicated her passion for biology so thoroughly that it is not uncommon for students to come into school early or stay after school to complete their lab research. Last year, Nicole had a 100% student success rate for our AP biology students with all students passing the exam. This is only possible because of the extreme dedication and focus that she devotes to her students. While her students are coming early and staying late, so is Nicole. Dedicated to providing our students with a window into the world of biology, Nicole seeks out opportunities to give our students real world exposure to this field. Along with one of her colleagues, Nicole hosts a speaker series that many of you already know about, in which alumni of our high school return to present to students about their experiences in the field of science. Seeking to foster an even greater support system, Nicole invites female alumna into her classroom to speak with female students about the particular challenges and opportunities for women in science. Having attended several of these luncheons, I found that students asked incredibly insightful questions that gave them an understanding of the wide variety of options in the field of biology. Nicole is passionate about teaching biology, and she believes that she can do this most effectively by developing herself as a professional. She continuously adapts her teaching methods, tools, and lessons to be sure that students are challenged and engaged appropriately according to their needs. Her colleague, Kirk McGrady, notes that, being next door, I see the hours of preparation, the thoroughness and attention to detail, and the effort taken to create a truly collegiate experience in her AP Biology classes. I'm continuously impressed with the creativity and level to which Nicole works to provide the best experiences for her students. Tonight, I am so happy to have our superintendent, Mrs. Riley, our administrative team, and the Interboro Board of School Directors join me to celebrate Nicole for earning the Jennifer Fannerstill Travel Award. Congratulations, Nicole. Congrats, Nicole. Congratulations, Thank you so much. Nicole. Congratulations. Thank you. You have to speak, Nicole. <laughs> um, and, and congratulations. Um, and I have the uh, distinct privilege of recognizing another teacher in our building that um, many of you already recognize her work or had the opportunity to work with her in other capacities beyond just the classroom. Um, but it's my privilege to uh, recognize uh, Ms. Hannah Knauss um, for, the, for the incredible work that she's done. I'm gonna list a few things here as well that just, uh, for those of you in, in education or, or in leadership roles, you always, you know who you have in your buildings that are the people that you go to. You know it's going to get done. They're there to support, they're there to help, they are there to solve. In some cases, even tell you when you're doing something wrong and fix it for you. Um, Ms. Knauss is that person. You, the light is always on. You, the, the testaments from her students alone are absolutely incredible. I believe Ms. Knauss is your eighth year, correct? Um, and one of the few teachers in, in this place that have actually gone from kindergarten through up to 12th grade students. So to be able to say that you have touched all the students from the beginning right to the end is, is pretty incredible. Not every teacher can say that. Um, Ms. Knauss also, um, I think by 
me kind of saying, becoming the theater director as well, uh, she, she jumped in and when that program started, or at least when we came on, Ms. Knauss, I would say there's maybe 30 or so kids in that program. And for those of you who had the experience of, of Ms. Knauss production, I believe there's about 120 kids at this point involved in that, everywhere from, from costume design to being on the stage and the music to public relations. Um, and to manage that many students beyond just your classroom time is absolutely incredible. Um, and for those of you who are involved in these, if you see the time, the hour, and the commitment that those students put into this um, and, and, the, and the effort that, that Ms. Knauss and company puts into this, it's just, it's, it's absolutely incredible. But on top of that, she's also one of our PBIS members too. And that's something we've been doing quite a bit of work, even district wide. Um, she's taken on with other colleagues as part of the student team and really getting to hear the student voice and really being able to connect with our kids, um, which we cannot thank her enough for. Um, but interestingly enough, beyond all those things, and I don't know how Ms. Knauss has the ability to make 25 hours in a day, but she does it because her commitment goes beyond just being a, a, the choral teacher, is that just, and I believe this August, you're, you are now a published author. We now add that to her resume as well. Um, the book is called Choral Connections, Enhancing the Ensemble Experience. Um, it is a book that I actually, when it came out, only cost 40 bucks, I'm not pitching it. Um, but it was fantastic, and it proof is in the pudding because Ms. Knauss even used it during the school year. And what, it's, what's very interesting about this book, it's beyond just theory. I, I mean, there are parts in here to show you how to, everything from online learning, creating substitute plans, empowering the students in the growth mindset with the music they perform, connecting with each other and the world around them. Um, the book is fantastic. Um, it is incredible. I don't know where you have the time to, to find, to write this as well. Um, her talents are, are, are just incredible and they're limitless. Um, just to let you know, and Ms. Spina can even attest to this, when Google has a problem with something, they talk to Ms. Canals because somehow she gets it figured out, charts, documents, sharing things. Um, and again, it's, it's things for, like myself and Ms. And, and Ms. Spina and Mr. Blitz that we can say, we know this is a go-to person in our building. And if you don't think of me, listen to the kids, the students in here, and I think it's one right in the room that we're looking at that can uh, validate everything I'm saying, Ms. Parker, correct, in, in the time and, and what her kids think about her. So she is truly a valuable asset in our building. We could be more proud of you. Um, but beyond just your commitment to your craft, your profession, um, it, it, it's absolutely incredible, especially to the commitment to the district and our children. So congratulations and thank you, Ms. Canals, for all you do for Interborough School District. Thank you for the recognition. And I just stayed up super late during COVID. That's <laughs> how that happened. Uh, on behalf of the administration, I would like to congratulate both Mrs. Werner and Ms. Canals for their accomplishments and for bringing this positive recognition to Innerboro um, and also providing these amazing learning opportunities for our students, both in the classroom. Um, you know, and what you both do outside with track and field and with cars and our theater program. So thank you so much for having such a positive impact and being wonderful role models for our students. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, Ms. Warner, Ms. Knauss uh, from the board, we want to thank you. Uh, we're not surprised because we have great dedicated staff members here, and uh, but we are impressed. Okay, uh, moving on to uh, number four, Mr. Evans, public comments? None, sir. Okay. Moving on to uh, number five. Motion 5.1 that the following minutes of the regular meeting of the Interborough Board of School Directors held on September 16, 2020 be approved. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. And next up will be our solicitor's report with uh, Mr. Pupio. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board, Superintendent Riley, uh, as well as the honorees, congratulations. Uh, the report uh, for this month has focused mainly on uh, two things, uh, the reassessment process, which we have been monitoring and going through 
the various appeals as they have been scheduled, uh, as well as the uh, overall appeal uh, where our expert has pointed out that he feels that there are some significant flaws uh, in the reassessment and uh, that the county would need to take some actions to correct that. Uh, that hearing was held before the Board of Assessment on last Wednesday, one week ago from today. <clears throat> uh, there has been no ruling on that, but I would not expect the Board of Assessment to grant the requested relief. Um, the hearings will continue to move forward until the results uh, of uh, the the results of the hearings and the entire tax roll is certified by the county, usually taking place on November 15th, but this year has been extended to December 1st. And at that point, we'll be better able to calculate uh, the what our expert concludes is, is a, a significant error we'll be able to, to conclude uh, uh, based on the hearings as to whether the county was able to narrow the gap in the coefficient of dispersion, which is the measuring stick for assessments. The second topic uh, that uh, in addition to the regular business of the school district, we have certainly been monitoring any and all developments out of Harrisburg, as well as the legislative uh, agenda, uh, as it pertains to any developments with regard to the continuing COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, things can, uh, things change quickly as everyone on this board is aware uh, and they change much quicker in Harrisburg as well than they used to. So we're keeping close eyes on uh, changes in the law uh, or changes that are proposed as it pertains to everything from attendance to special education uh, and uh, the actual conduct of meetings like this. So we're paying attention to all of that uh, and trying to keep uh, Superintendent Riley as well as the appropriate department heads advised. So thank you for the time this evening. Thank you, Mr. Krupia. Moving on to uh, number seven, Mr. Evans, financial. From the Office of Finance, motion 7.1 that the treasurer's report for the month ending September 30th, 2020 be approved. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion 7.2, the fund disbursements in the amount of $9,036,569.10 be approved. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Next up, we will have our uh, committee reports. Uh, first one will be 9.1 Finance, Mr. Chabon. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Uh, the Finance Committee met on October 5th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, first, we discussed the re refinance of the GBO series uh, bond 2014 and 2017 bonds. It was discussed that the interest rates are so low that even if that we are calling these bonds a little early and they will be taxable, we would still save a significant amount of money. Uh, the savings is approximately $1.1 million over the length of the bond or about $90,000 um, a year. Uh, this item is on the agenda tonight for approval. We then discussed the capital improvement projects uh, with previous unspent bond money. There's approximately $123,000 uh, left over. Um, and Mrs. Riley and Mr. Galloway presented two projects, one being the replacement of administration, the administration building carpet, which would cost about $70,000 to $80,000, and LED signage for each of the school buildings. Uh, we're currently waiting on um, quotes for those items. There were then some additional uh, informational items. Mr. High School shared the audit timeline, which has started. Hopefully we will be hearing back in the next couple of months. Uh, we also re received the budget timeline from Mr. High School, and uh, we received the uh, tax index for the Interbar School District, which is, is 3%, with an adjust, adjusted index of 4%. Uh, 
And then Mrs. Riley also informed the board of CARES Act pass-through money from the DCIU, which is also on the agenda tonight. And we uh, adjourned at our next finance meeting will be the first Monday of um, November. That's it for the finance report. Thank you, Mr. Chavon. Okay, moving on to 9.2, the GBO meeting, Mr. Goldsboro. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Uh, yeah, on uh, Monday, October 5th, uh, after the finance meeting, uh, the GBO meeting uh, took place. Uh, there were a number of items that were uh, talked about and discussed. Um, Mr. Galloway uh, and Mrs. Riley uh, talked of a, of a renovation project to the kindergarten and office area and the basement renovation project. Um, we are currently in the process of, uh, of choosing um, architects for our, an architectural firm for that. And, uh, and that decision, I think, will be made in November at some point, um, uh, and which point will be uh, presented, uh, you know, possible plans and, and things like that. So uh, that will be moving forward. Um, the also uh, discussed at the GBO meeting was a technology update by Mr. Sonnet and uh, where we are currently with uh, devices and and getting everybody online and and uh, and the and, and uh, some of the issues and some of the things that have gone well in that. Um, uh, also, along, uh, also during the GBO meeting, uh, Mrs. Riley gave us an enrollment update uh, of uh, students enrolled in uh, I so I Cyber and I Sync and also a uh, number of students that were uh, planning to be in person at, the, uh, at each of the community schools and also at the high school. Um, and so we were kept up to date with, with those things, uh, with those numbers. And, uh, and then the last thing that was presented was uh, Mr. Avitable um, did a presentation about the math pilot update, um, a pilot program uh, Bridges is uh, is the one I I I forget what the other one is that uh, that was uh, discussed, uh, but uh, and the the fact that this ended up uh, saving us uh, some money and also it seems like it's a program uh, the the program that was being used previously was uh, outdated uh, and uh, and would have been difficult to uh, implement and so the pivot to this. Uh, seem to be uh, something, especially with uh, with uh, teachers in the elementary in the uh, community schools, going to uh, more of a departmentalization. Uh, that it seemed a ripe opportunity for this. So those were the major things that were discussed at the GBO meeting, uh, and our next GBO meeting will be taking place the first Monday of uh, November. Thank you, Mr. Goldsboro. Uh, moving on to uh, 9.3, the legislative report. Mr. Chavon. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Um, there's just a couple items I, that I wanted to highlight. This is my first legislative report. Um, we did not have a legislative meeting this month. They're uh, going to have another one next month. But I did get a, an email with just some um, topics that Harrisburg and the federal government are discussing that would impact us. Um, first, in terms of COVID-19 relief update, the federal government is still at an impasse. They have not um, figured out another stimulus package. Uh, there's a bunch of different options going around. Um, if one a stimulus package is passed, there is talk of significant money um, that will be allocated to uh, school districts. So we'll keep an eye on that, but at, at this point, there's nothing to um, report. There are a couple of bills in uh, that have been referred to committee that would directly impact school districts that I just wanted to highlight. Um, but other, th they're not anything that would be going to the governor's desk yet. They're just, um, they're being discussed. There's uh, a House Bill 2904, which is a school sports attendance limits during COVID-19. Um, the school district, uh, this bill would allow school districts interested in allowing spectators at sporting events to develop occupancy plans that would need to be submitted to PDE for approval. HB 2905 is PPE for K to 12 school custodians slash sanitation protocol. 
which um, would require schools to have health plans in place that includes cleaning and sanitizing all buildings on a frequent basis. There's also eight, a House Bill 2910, which is COVID-19 Education work for, Workforce Preservation. Um, this legislation would compensate education support professionals who are in furloughs. And then Senate Bill 1332 is uh, school nursing services during COVID, which the bill would seek to al allocate $38 million to funding school nurses. Um, so those are the state, uh, the bills that are currently working through committee. Um, there is another topic that was on the email that um, the DCIU legislative uh, liaison sent about cyber charter schools. There are on October 1st um, is the deadline when cyber charters can submit um, to the PDE for approval um, to become a cyber charter uh, school and PDE need to approve it. But this is the first year since 2015 that two schools um, or two uh, cyber charter applications have been um, presented. So they will be considering those. And I, I just think that's important for us to be aware of because there has been a slight uptick in cyber charter school enrollment and that does impact um, school districts across the state. So I will keep an eye on that and report back if I hear anything else. Thank you, Ms. Pearl. Thank you, Mr. Chabon. Okay, moving on to 9.3, Delaware County Community College, Mr. Goldsboro. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Uh, yeah, uh, the uh, Delaware County Community College, um, our last uh, information from them was back in May when they were presenting uh, their budgetary information for us to be able to share and as part of our budget. Um, they did send out a communication that uh, that they were going to be freezing um, tuition uh, for the, the current um, academic year. Uh, that doesn't have any impact on us as far as our allocation, but that is something that they, they're gonna be doing. Um, also, uh, in, in uh, one week, uh, yeah, I think it will be the 28th, there is a liaison meeting that normally takes place where it's a dinner and we get a presentation by the Delaware County Community College. Um, usually the food's really good too, uh, but, but uh, we're not, it's going to be virtual this year, but all school board members have been invited to go to that meeting um, and uh, and it, 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 we will be discussing uh, obviously things that are going on currently at Delaware County Community College, but that will be next week. So I should have a report, uh, a, a more robust report, I should say, uh, next week or next month at next month board meeting. So thank you, Mr. Phelps. Thank you, Mr. Goldsboro. Okay, moving on to 9.4, Delaware County IU, Mr. Harris. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. The Delaware County Intermediate Unit met on October 7, 2020. Discussed was contracts with Montgomery County Intermediate Unit for DCI to provide a second year of professional development services and support for the middle school success pathways to graduation. Also approved for the DCTS Local Advisory Committee and Occupational Advisory Committee members for the 2020 2021 school year. We also approved the acceptance of the DCIU COVID-19 health and safety grant from the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Discipline, disciplinary in the amount of $90,000 to address the COVID-19 related health and safety issues. A contract with Haverford Township School District and Southeast Delco School District for non-public reading specialists. For more information and news, go to dciu.org. The next DCIU board directors meeting is November 4th, 2020 at 6.45 p.m. at the Morton facility. That is all I have, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Okay, at this time our uh, student representatives uh, can be excused. But they would uh, more, than, more than welcome to stay on if you'd like, but you can be excused. <laughs> thank you, ladies. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, moving on to uh, number 10 there, uh, Mr. Evans. From the Office of Personnel, motion that the following personnel actions be approved, starting with 10.1 to 10.11 on page 8. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. 
Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion with regret that the following retirements be approved. 11.1, .1, Judith Conowald, teacher at Prospect Park School with 36 years of service to the district be approved for retirement effective December 4th, 2020. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Uh, myself, I would uh, you know, like to thank uh, Ms. Connell for her years of service, 36 years. It's a lot of years. Uh, the district does appreciate it. Hearing any more comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. And motion with regret that the uh, following item retirement be approved. Robin Pitts, science teacher at the high school with 22 years of service to the district be approved for retirement. Date effective December 31st, 2020. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Uh, again, you know, 22 years at the high school. That's like 40 years, just so you know. It's not... Not the elementary school, it's the high school. So we do appreciate it, Mr. Pitts. Um, hearing any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. From the Office of Curriculum and Instruction, motion that the following items be approved 12.1 to 12.4, ending on page nine. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry 8-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. From the Office of Special Education and Pupil Services, motion the following items be approved 13.1 to 13.5. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry 8-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. From the Office of Technology, motion that the following items be approved 14.1 to 14.3. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, motions carry 8-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion 15, that the Board of School Directors approve the agreement with DCIU as it relates to consortium pricing services for user accounts in the Frontline Education Professional Development Management System for the 2020-2021 school year at a cost of $6,999.44 to be paid from district funds. Second. Mo motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion 16, that the Board of School Directors approve the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security CARES Act funding agreement between the DCIU and Interborough School District in the amount of $667,668, or I'm sorry, $667,668.70. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion 17 is a roll call motion. That the Board of School Directors approve the resolution authorizing the incurrence, incurrence of non-electoral debt through the issuance of taxable bonds, which bonds shall, one, reduce the school district's outstanding debt service by refunding its series 2014 and 2017 bonds, and second, pay costs of issuing and insuring, if applicable, the bonds, 
accept the proposal for the purchase of the bonds, appoint bond cancel, and approve all actions necessary to accomplish the foregoing. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Uh, hearing none, Ms. Caldwell, could we have a roll call, please? Mrs. Krajewski? Aye. Mr. Harris? Aye. Mr. Goldsboro? Yes. Ms. Joseph? Yes. Ms. Fagan? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Chavon? Yes. Mr. Phelps? Yes. Motion carries 8 0. Uh, do we have uh, any old business to be discussed? Hearing none, uh, new business. We will now hear comments from our uh, superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our parents for being proactive and following our protocols and guidelines regarding symptom checking and keeping students at home when they are not feeling well. We do recognize that it can be hard to keep children home for extended periods of time, but research is showing that COVID-19 can sometimes present with mild symptoms in children and therefore can be mistaken for common illnesses. Please continue to keep your child home if they are not feeling well, especially with the holiday and winter seasons approaching. If you have any questions or concerns or need some additional assistance or clarification of our symptom checking form, I would ask that you would reach out to your school nurses. They are more than happy to talk with you and answer any questions that you might have. Uh, we, see, we received an update from PDE that the waiver from the USDA has approved um, through the school lunch program to continue to provide free meals for students through the 2021 school year. Earlier this evening, everyone should have received a Blackboard message with a letter from my office with updates on a few modifications that we will be making to our current procedures. The letter is also available on our website for parents. Uh, and lastly, I would like to congratulate uh, both Robin Pitts and Judy Conowall who are retiring um, for their years of service and dedication to the students here in Interboro. They have had very long and successful careers and um, have absolutely had an impact on, uh, on our students. So I really truly um, wish them the best. This is not the best circumstances to be retiring under, um, especially during COVID. Usually there's a lot of festivities and recognition, um, but you know, we're glad to take this opportunity and congratulate them. So on behalf of the administrative team, um, I do wish them well, we wish them well, and uh, hopefully they'll have a wonderful retirement. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Riley. Uh, do we have any uh, comments from any of our board members? Okay, hearing none. Uh, at this time, the uh, Interboro School District will continue to hold all future meetings remotely until further notice. Please visit the Interboro School District website at www.interborosd.org for further information. On Monday, <clears throat> November 2nd, 2020, a finance GBO committee meeting will be held at 7 p.m. The next work session of the Interboro Board of School Directors will be held on Monday, November 16th, 2020 at 7 p.m. The next regularly monthly public meeting of the Interboro Board of School Directors will be held on Wednesday, November 18th, 2020 at 7 p.m. Thank you all for coming tonight and we appreciate your time. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good